Okay, so we're going to get started. I don't use microphones, so just bear with me. I'm Lucas Cameron. This is Brian May. And we're going to come out the expo today. We have a great expo. We're going to show you a bunch of alternative energy grabs that you can do on budget. We'll put up on the screen to take more grades. But I'm going to start out and I'm going to hand it off to Brian. And let him take a couple of grabs that you can You know, you're not going to just take savvy if you're going to be able to see the right way. situation where that I've not even had stuff to reach towards my communication so I can tell you definitely nowadays it's a big issue okay, I make sure to have that so I'm gonna hand it off to Brian he's gonna cover a few here and then we'll just swap back and forth what we have right here is a portable solar panel the solar panel right here you can charge your phone and other devices they have uh, multiple connectors on them these can be bought on eBay. You can probably find some other federal conventions. These would be great for emergency situation. Um, because obviously, you know, pass all these But you know, in a grid down situation, some communication you still will be able to use. So that's definitely something we would uh, want to have in an emergency situation. And also can be used, like our son actually carries out on his back. So if you go on a camp trip as well, you also can use it folks before anything was really So definitely a good item to have, inexpensive. I think that one right there was like $30. They do have alternative battery packs that connect to them the same way your phone would and uh, that would store extra power on your cell phone. There is no brand name on that one, but no, it's just basically a solar panel charger. And like I said, if you look on eBay, or there may be some vendors over here, but just type in a uh, portable solar panel for charging your phones. And uh, I think they have like a uh, packs up to like 5,000 5, uh, milliwatts. Uh, and they have different size packs you can actually charge for that. That pin right there, I think it's only 3 watt, but it does work pretty well for the, for the job. Now here is a, another option for portable solar, and this is by Gold Zero. But I will tell you that this is a good panel, but it's, it's pricey. You can find a panel that's exactly the same style as this at nomadplug.com. It's almost identical, $50 cheap. You know, so this is one of those if you're gonna buy real quick on the fly, just so you have some uh, charging capabilities for your phone, uh, communication devices, things like that. This is a great option, but like I said, Nomad Plug produces a product that's exactly identical to this. The thing's bright red. I don't know why they made it bright red, you know, black. It's going to be a little more, you know, selling feature, but it's bright red. It's great for the guys fire car. But anyway, I'm going to pass that around. I'll run through this one here. This one right here, if you do not buy this at this expo before you leave, I'm not getting paid anything to tell you this. But that gentleman that's on the other side of that back there, Alan at greenabated.com, shame be upon you if you don't get you one of these if you want rechargeable batteries. This thing is equivalent to 90 batteries. Okay, if you have to buy batteries, this is equivalent to like 90 batteries. You can't buy rechargeable batteries for the cost of this shit. This is like 30 bucks. Um, I, everyone, uh, all my friends that are in the town that I live in, the emergency services, I got this from fire, EMS, police, and from guys in my FEMA volunteer team. We all have this. The EMS actually done a test with it the other day. It's great and um, it's rechargeable safety. If you like some friends to say you have like a bowel thing, does anybody know? Um, anything about hand ramp. Okay, the bow thing insert, you can put these in there. So it's great. It uses salt water, uh, not to be profane. In an emergency situation, if you had to use the bathroom in this, you can have enough salt out of your body to charge your own batteries. So it's pretty neat using human batteries. So you but you fill it with salt. The salt packets come with it. You put water in it up to the fuel line. It's made in the USA, in China. So anyway, it charges up the batteries and it's just a super awesome tech product to have for the grid. And you can find out all that info, like I said, just on the other side of the banister. And Alan is here with his products. He's got some great stuff. 
Yeah, let me go. I'm going to go grab one and see what we can do about this. So, this right here is a portable shower. Once again, something can be found online relatively cheap. Um, I do not know the manufacturer, but that's where I found this one. Uh, if you're wanting to have a nice little shower unit that runs off DC, this would be the way to go. I like to have my luxuries, even with grid down. So this would be a great item to search out for. You just put battery power up to it, pump some water up to the bottom, and you have a portable shower. So, cast this one here. Just, it pumps it through there. It does pump it through. And it runs off 12 volt battery. So, you also drive it just straight to your solar if you needed to, as long as there's enough amperage to run the pump on it. Definitely an item, a luxury item to have. Not a, you, everybody thinks, you know, grid down, you're not going to be luxury. There are luxuries out there if you find them. And that's actually inexpensive. I think that's another 30, 40 hour item or less. Like I said, I can find one even. Although this is not an alternative energy grab, we threw this in here because we're talking about technical things. Everybody wants a Geiger meter and they're very expensive. Uh, not only that, but they're expensive to have them calibrated. Ever since Fukushima, the disaster happened, the, there is a company in Japan that they came together as a non-profit to create a Geiger meter that anybody can use anytime on the go. And that's it right there. You plug in your smartphone. If you've got an iPhone, iOS device, and plug in. They make all sorts of This thing works great. I tested my house and we're radiation free, so that's a good thing. But, you know, some place in the world, you might have to worry about that. But, you, can't, you know, where I live, I live next to Oak Ridge uh, in Tennessee. So there's a huge uh, opportunity there that terrorists never want to attack us. That's a hot spot. So good thing to put up. Um, it's very inexpensive. It's like 50 bucks. And we bought a guy from Meter online. They're run into hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Uh, very easy to use. The app for it is free on the app store. So you don't have to, uh, have to pay out for that either. Okay, back to the shower thing. Another great thing hot water. These right here you can find at Missouri Wind and Solar. Uh, just DC power. Uh, I think this one's up to. This is a 250 water, but this will heat the water for you. So another solar prep that you can use to have a luxury item. Okay. Also another thing, there's many different types of types of panels out. This is a morphous cell. Now the difference between this and other actual panels is this is glass with the cells deposited on it. Now these right here work great in low light. Uh, many panels, if you, let's say a bird droppings on it, it disables most of your panel or all your panel. Something like this is good if you have less, uh, I guess you'd say obstacles. You know, I mean, not, not Basically, if we were to have something to obstruct this, you would still actually have solar capabilities versus the other panels where if something gets on it, you know, someone blocked it correctly, it disables the whole cell. So definitely a good item to have instead of all the expensive ones. I try to have these type of panels and then the more expensive types. So this is like, I guess you could say the... Just one of the panels that have, like I said, low light. Now, um, I'm beginning to experiment on my YouTube channel with thermal power. Uh, it's something that we're going to hopefully have for a blast come this fall. I'm going to show you how to build an entire thermal power unit that you can set on your stove. Um, but should you want to buy one, this is a new product that's going to be on the market. It's not even on the market yet. This is one of the prototypes. Um, it's by Stove Light, and they're in the USA, made in Vermont. I'm really excited about that, American-made product. They use healthy air plates. If anybody's uh, familiar with heating and cooling refrigeration, you can send electrical current through that to cool things. But when heated, it produces electricity. Now, this unit right here is going to be the base model. We're going to sell about 100 bucks. You set it on the stove, the wood stove, whatever you got, and heat, and you can take it up, walk around with it, use it just like the 1800s. It has a LED light in it, and it just uses heat to make power and really awesome. They're going to have one that has an adjuster knob, USB port, and all that fancy stuff, but 
this is not out yet, like I said, but I would definitely encourage you to get this because if anybody's got a, if you're, if you're prepper, okay, homestead, survivals, whatever you find yourself as, or you're just ready for an emergency and you got a wood stove, this is something you can just definitely get put back. I mean, it's, it works great. I have a YouTube review up of it uh, here just recent, but that's going to be a neat thing to uh, see come to market. So I think at this point what we're going to do now is we're going to transition into some larger bills. And now the things that we're sharing with you, you can check out on our YouTube channels. Our business cards is over there at the table. You feel free after the presentation to walk by. You can put your hands on everything. Try out the bicycle. Give it a spin if you want to. But to start with, and try to get a bigger image up there on the screen so everybody can see, this is a solar air heater. Um, this this unit, I was hoping to get it up to 140 degree output uh, as heat. We got it up to 130 at about 15 cubic feet a minute. So that's pretty awesome. That heat up room pretty quick. Um, it's built completely out of garbage. I make it a point to uh, me and Brian do a lot of repurposing on everything that we build or use. And uh, I try to build everything out of recycled material and garbage and because, you know, in, in peach, you might need to be doing that. So this. This build right here can take you about a day's time in your workshop. Um, it's the, the glass is recycled Lexan. It is bulletproof up to a certain amount. The cans are just recycled Dr. Pepper cans. Uh, the panels you can get at Radio Shack. All the information for these builds and where to get the component stuff are in it. The, the wood from this is from an old beat up pallet. Cut it up, recycled the pallet. The fan is from a computer. And the thermometer is the, a meat thermometer that drilled and put that down through there. And I built this to give them my mom and dad because their heating and cooling bill is astronomical. And so you can put this in the south facing window indoors and it will heat up quite a substantial amount of space. Like I said, 15 cubic feet per minute. You get the area of your room so I can kind of give you an idea how many of those you might want to build. But this can set in the window. So it doesn't have to be something huge you have to mount outside on your house. The bill cost of that, if you're very careful, uh, can be about 50 bucks. Matter of fact, uh, if you get one of the panels off eBay, you can get it for about five or six dollars as opposed to running a radio show. So, there you know, I'm going to show something else that uh, y'all can be looking out for. There are many places other than Prepper Expos to get cheap and inexpensive preps. 25 cents. Each one of these water filters do 40 gallons of water. Like I said, 25 cents found them at a Walgreens on clearance. Finger splints, a dollar bill store. Y'all have it right here in this area, you know, in an emergency situation. You know, cold packs, knee supports, thermometers. All this stuff can be done and found at dollar bill stores. So not all preps have to be expensive. That's when everybody comes at us and says, well, I don't have a lot of money to prep. You don't have to have a lot of money to prep. Dollar stores, Walgreens, everybody has clearance areas. Go check every one of them out. There's always something to find a good deal. Okay, so to move to the next project, um, I'll make a note on this real quick. Wood gasification. Uh, if you've seen my spot on Doomsday Preppers, that wood gasifier that we build, okay, you can find the entire build for that on the YouTube from start to finish making the wood gasifier. But I will caution you, out of all the build preps and things that I build and share with people, please be careful making that. Because, you know, wood gas can be dangerous. Okay? You can make yourself, uh, I mean, it's very flammable. Okay, so unlike other things, we're just dealing with electricity. That's going in, pumping into a generator uh, and then making fuel in place of if you need gasoline. But the entire build is step by step from start to finish. It's not a very expensive build. The most expensive component is that hose coming off right there because you have to get racing quality, I'm talking NASCAR quality, heat hose. Because it's the only thing that will hold up to that kind of temperature. Because when you get wood at 450 something degrees, you are definitely cooking. Uh, and that, that char gas comes off and makes your fuel. But that build video is on there as well. But I'm going to step over here to the bicycle generator now because many people prep alternative energy preps. The one thing the government, NASA, and even people like us want is something that is EMP proof. Okay, there's very few things in life that are EMP proof. That right there that lady's holding right now, the stove light, it's EMP proof. It takes heat. Those batteries back there, chemical process, EMP proof. Human power, 
EMP proof. Yes, it does have a, a, a blocking diode in it, but even if the diode was fried, you could begin pedaling and the path of least resistance is going to push the power into the battery. When you're getting close to done pedaling, pull the lead off and you're not going to be back feeding. Yeah, absolutely. So, so to begin with, I'm going to just kind of go over the initial concept because me and Brian talked about this back and forth. We live states apart, but we spent a lot of time going over ideas, brainstorming. And he sent out the motor to me to, because uh, we had, I had most of the components laying around, and it doesn't take much power, much pedal power to make power. My son can do this as a casual ride. And, okay. So, we're, we're gonna be making voltage here just shortly, right there, okay. And the amperage is down here, but if you can't see it good right now, just come by our booth in a little while and we'll show you. This is one of the easiest builds that we've ever constructed. Okay, um, it, it's just a day's worth of your time. The metal framing, you can find at Lowe's. Uh, just buy you one of the shelf kits and throw the shelves away. Just use the metal. Uh, the, the thing that we done different in concept is we kept going back and forth. You see all these people, they have an alternator. They're on that bicycle and they're like, <laughs> and they're about to stroke out. Well, we took a extremely high voltage DC treadmill motor that's designed to move you, you know, move me, fight against us, and we rewired it so that, you know, there's no controller wires, we just cut that out of the way, and so all you have is your hot ground leak coming off, so now you're the motor controller, and now you tell it how much voltage you want, and so I'm going to hand it off to Brian and let him further take you through how that we went with this concept. Okay, any treadmill normally would have something similar to this. This one right here is a 95 volt and at 9.1 amps at 41.50 RPM. But mind you, that's at 95 volts DC. When you cut that down into a lower... Okay. Anyhow, when you get to put the actual 12 volt battery on there, it kind of regulates it down. And then you can get some of these motors, you can get two or three horsepower. The, you know, the bigger, the more amperage you can put out. Like I said, this is right at 9.1 amps. And you can at least get a few amps of charge into a battery. And that, that's really all you need to do to charge up a battery. Your average regular battery charge you plug in the wall anyway is 2 to 10 amps. And by the way, the, the slower you charge a battery anyhow, the better off you are. It's a longer charge. So it's probably going to be one of the best ways to do it. You know, if you don't have solar or wind, this is just a cheap alternative as well. These motors can be, I mean, even if you bought one off eBay, they're inexpensive or online. You can find them even at junkyards. Everybody's always throwing out a treadmill. It seems like everybody gets one and a month or two later, they throw them out or have no use for them or some burns up in them. But you can always gut it and find good components in it. So, I mean, just always be looking out for what people throw away, you know. This is gold right here, you know, for someone like us. Now, uh, keep in mind that as you do the build, you will see that where that we went back and forth on the design, that depending upon the bike that you have, there's so many different bikes, don't use a road bike for this build, use a mountain bike, okay? Because through the gearing, I haven't really gotten the, I wasn't, I didn't pay attention too well in science class, and later down the road I was like, man, I wish I paid attention, you know? You can find that out later in life. Well, anyway, the ratio here to the smaller gear, you take that and then you go from even a much larger down to even smaller, so it's almost like a 200 to one ratio you're not got to put that much effort into it. Later down the road, disaster strikes, hard times come, whatever it may be, you don't want to be exhausting your energy out to too many things. You're cutting wood five minutes, you know, you're pedaling power five minutes, you don't want to be exhausting yourself. So that right there takes a lot out of the play. And you can use with these treadmill motors where that the belt was designed in the treadmill, you can go to O'Reilly's and get a micro V belt for the size that you decide you want. So the great thing about that is, everybody knows your belt wires down like your car and you keep hearing the whining when it's trying to heat up and the cold and all that. Well, you can just, with this type of racking, you can adjust out your bike so your belt's getting more. Well, just adjust it down a notch. Now it's got tension on it again. There's a lot of play and flexibility in that. But um, the great thing about that is, is you don't have to run that through a charge controller because be mindful of your pedaling it out, you know, you're getting around two amps, so that's just like putting one of those uh, smaller solar panels to a battery and setting it out like they have at Harbor Freight. But I'm going to hand it over to Brian and let him go into some other options and some solar here. 
Okay. Another thing is for people that are living in current times, obviously everything's not about the end. So this right here is for the person that just wants to do, hook up solar in their home and wants to do it simple. The easiest way to do is you get a panel like this, you run the wiring straight into this. Now on the other side of this, there's actually a house plug that comes out of this. This plugs straight into a outlet. You want to use one outlet like you have in your bathroom that has a reset on it. And what it does is it takes all the electricity made from the solar panel and converts it into 60 hertz AC, exact same thing in your house. So what happens is, let's say that you have a 200 watt solar panel hooked up to this guy. What will happen is if you're making 200 watts with this, and let's say your home is just using 200 watts, let's use that example, your meter would not move at all. Now, let's say that you're using 100 watts in your house, um, what would happen is you would go back 100 watts, so your meter would turn backwards if it allows it to. So therefore you're paying, you're basically giving power to the power company, and some power companies actually will pay for the power that you're making. So. I've got like, I think I have like four or five of these stacked on top of each other. So I have the option of my home. I do have 40 batteries running parallel like we've seen on the show. But anyhow, I have the option to either charge that battery bank or to actually pump it back into my home or give it back to the power grid. Which in my case, I'm using more power to making. But it's the same, it, you know, anyhow it goes. It's whatever way you decide you want to do it. So you don't have to go doing, if you're not electrical engineer, you don't have to go through and have a degree to wire up some solar in your home. This is the simplest way to do it. There are other ways as well, but this is the simplest way. Some of these are actually will work with the wind power, like the, my solar, like the wind turbine over there. So you can use wind or solar. Someone will actually hook up both to them. And like I said, what it does, it actually matches the electricity in your home. That way it doesn't actually blow up anything. But you always want to use you know, a fused outlet and also on a breaker. But otherwise, these things actually just plug in the wall like any other appliance does. So, but I do recommend using like your bathroom type outlet that has a resettable, you know, and breaker and built into it. But good thing to have. These are inexpensive. I think most of them are 100, 200 bucks. They've come down in price and they keep on coming down more every day. I mean, I even picked up one for like $50. So, good thing to have. And what it is, it has a it has little lights on the side of it. And the more power you're giving to it, the more faster the lights be flashing. So, and it'll tell you fault if, basically the fault light, the only time it comes on if there's an issue or if there's absolutely no solar at all going on or no wind, that would be at night. But these right here are for your power off your solar panel, your positive and your negatives. So it's real simple, hook right into there, up the back of the panel there, into this, push it right into your house. And now you're, you're taking money off your electric bill, that's simple. So not much to these things. Now, um, we're going to touch back on that here in just a minute. We've got some wiring diagrams to show you a few things because depending on the state that you live in, there is electrical codes and then also the electric company has certain guidelines that they make you go by. Um, for instance, my electric company flat out fines you or fees you out of wanting you to make your own power because you got to sign an agreement, sign an interconnection fee. And we'll cover all that in a minute, but I want to talk about small wind for a minute. There's this, this saying everybody says, you can't make wind power. You know, if you're wanting to have your own wind and at your home, you can't make wind power. Well, the problem is, is like there's this college out from us uh, where I'm at in Tennessee, and they have like a 5KW unit. The only time it ever makes power is when it's coming like the storm of all storms about to rip your roof. That's useless to us. We want power every day. As you can see, me and Brian have a different concept. We use small wind and we get power all the time. There's almost not a day goes by that the wind turbine that I built for my dad, uh, which actually you can see, that's my unit right there. There's not a day hardly goes by we don't get power off of ours. And the reason being is because we went a lot smaller scale, and that's a DC permanent magnet generator. And the only thing about that is, is there's a few things you need to put in place, charge controller and an inverter. And obviously when you're wiring this from your battery bank in or out, right here. Right here is one of the, uh, for example, this is a charge controller. Uh, obviously it's got solar marked on it right there at the moment, but they make ones like I've got the last part in a wind turbine install video going up next week. Uh, it'll be public on YouTube that will show you how the wiring comes directly in to a um, charge controller and inverter. Okay, so it'll show you all that um, in the build video. But I'm going to, while Brian's getting this stuff together, I want to talk to you a minute about grid tile. 
a lot of people, if you decide to go with a private company that does solar, I see there's a lot of solar people here today. Some of them is just for off-grid stuff. Uh, some of them might do grid tight installs. Here's the thing, to get a tax incentive, like in my state I live, TVA gives you $1,000 just for signing up. Here's a thousand bucks, thanks for making power. Problem with that, a lot of electric companies have caught on to that. Mine takes and finds you about six, seven hundred dollars for making your own power. So they, they found out that, you know, hey, there's some free money laying around, we'll take it right back. The government does want you to make your own power. The problem is a lot of private enterprises want to take that money right back. The 30% tax credit, you can get that back. My dad was a recipient of that this year. Um, there's so much to help you get it back. But a lot of times you have to start out this way. I know you want off-grid, but you're going to have to start out grid tied. And the thing about that is have an electrician uh, install a multi-pole switch disconnect. So what happens is if you ever do want to disconnect from selling power of an electric company and say you're charging your battery bank, or if you have like an outback that is uh, grid interactive, it can, you can have the, the great quality of both, such as an off-grid. And we can go in those, if anybody wants info about all them components and everything, we can break it down for you today. We've got all the time in the world over. But a lot of times you have to start out with your electric company, grid tight. And then over time you can transition off. The reason you want to do that is so you get the tax incentives and the rebates. Speaking on incentives, in Indiana where we're at, the county we're in, they gave us, I think we were paying like $800 a month in property tax. I think now we're only paying like 200 So we were able to get incentive just for having wind and solar in our own home. They actually took our property tax down. So there's different types of them. There actually is a website for it as well. I can get that if anybody wants it. But it tells you the tax incentives for every single state you live in and what they are for. Some of them are for geothermal, some of them may be for solar, some of them may be for wind. It just depends on where you're located at and what's available. Now he spoke about uh, different charge codes. There are other types as well. There's many different types of charge codes. This one is from Harbor Freight. They're local here. And this one right here has a USB where you can charge some USB. It has even lights that come with these kits right here. Uh, digital readout. So, you know, there's all different kinds of components. What you need to do is do your homework and see what's going to fit you. Are you preparing for something to happen or you want something that's just going to supplement for now or do you want to do both? But the main thing is to always have backups and backups. That's what we always say as preppers. You know, you must have backup backup. So this right here, I have multiple types myself. I have probably six or eight different kinds of charge controls myself. Everything has its own use at a certain time or, you know, you just, it's just mainly having something else. You just, you can't rely on it at one thing. Don't put your eggs all in one basket, ever. So, and another good hitting thing is, when you're doing one of solar, you need to know what your wattage output is of your panels or what you're using. You make a device called a kilowatt. They're available at Home Depots, Lowe's, all of them have them, I think they're 20 bucks or so. What it does is it actually tells you what watch you're using. It don't care which way it goes. It can go in or out, so even if you hook this to your grid tie, it will show you how much power your grid tie is making, as long as it's up to a certain amount of watts. I think there's a, a limit on these things, 15 amps. So depending on what your output is, you know, 15 amps through here. But, you know, you can see if it, whether it be a microwave, which is kind of extreme to be running on solar, but with the right grid tie, you can do it, an inverter. But uh, good thing to have uh, to have laying around, like most flat screen TVs, I think are pulling about 120 watts. So obviously if you want to run that TV constantly, you probably want to get you a couple hundred watt panel, just have extra there to charge your batteries or to supplement the power you're using. So, but uh, definitely check one of these out. Like I said, it's called a kilowatt. They do make a couple different models of these. Uh, this one actually is one for watts. They make one for amperage and different kinds. I have both types here, but this is the main one to buy. The one actually says wattage on it. Like I said, they can be had anywhere at any hardware store or online. So I'll pass this one around for you. Uh, another thing that if you're going to build a lot of DC power things that we do is to have a DC meter that has the amp clamp on it. Um, you know, a lot of projects, I've actually killed meters trying to do DC with AC stuff. And this will do 400 amps. Let me tell you, you get 400 amps going on, I want to see your build. Because, I mean, you've got some serious power going. But, uh, yeah, this is this is an example of it. And, uh, which was that? Yeah. 
Unfortunately, I had to order this from China because unfortunately there are Snap-on versions of it. Like in our audio store, we bought the Snap-on version of it. They're like $300. That was 36 bucks from China. I don't usually promote foreign stuff all the time, but sometimes you have to get it because it makes sense. But that right there is a DC one. Most people confuse them with AC ones. There is a difference. You cannot read AC with an AC one DC voltage and amperage correctly. I mean, you can read the voltage, but not the amperage. So you definitely want one of them specific. They do have the same leads like any other multimeter do on them. Um, but that's something definitely to check out and get. If you're doing any wind solar, that is kind of a must. The little cheap and expensive meters only rated like 5, 10 amps, and you will blow them up almost every time. Because if you give that power through them more than a few seconds, they burn them up. So unless you want to just keep throwing them away, I would go ahead and invest in one of them. Like I said, it's 30 some dollars. So once again, another prep that is kind of a must when you're uh, doing working with DC power. And uh, matter of fact, I got that one for him because he kind of blown up meters. So that just shows you something that's inexpensive that you need. So. And don't give up whenever you start doing your own preps. You know, take it a day at a time because this stuff didn't happen overnight. Like this right here looks very simple and just looks like I might have done it yesterday. It took like six months to gather up all the stuff for that. It's just whenever you can afford it because most people that start doing prepping are always running on a budget. Uh, especially when you come to alternative energy, this is one of the most expensive preps that there is because there's just so much depth that goes into it. Are you wanting heat? Are you wanting power? You know? And um, I'm going to wait and ask Brian. I guess at this point in time, we just we kind of say what we got to say and be done. But if you've got questions, uh, if you've got any questions you'd like to ask us, please feel free to ask us. And like I said, we're both going to be over here at the booth all day today, and we'll be back tomorrow speaking at work tomorrow. Thank you. Like I said, if anybody has any questions on the wind, solar, anything, uh, like I said, just come up and ask us and we'll answer anything that you have questions on.